Welcome back to Iron Man, right here at Comic Storian. My name is Benny, and I'll be your narrator for today. Iron Man just started a crossover event known as Iron Man 2020, and to prep you for that, we're going to have to do a couple of Iron Man chapters before we can get into Iron Man 2020. So to catch you up as to where we are now, back in Civil War II, Captain Marvel basically put Tony Stark into a coma. He eventually woke up and created a new body for himself, but that led to the question of, is he just a clone of himself or is he the real Tony Stark? Does he have a soul or is he just advanced AI? And after making a virtual reality world in which he was able to recreate his own parents, he realized he's not the original Tony Stark. He's now dealing with that realization, while his brother Arno Stark is working for his arch nemesis, Banetronics. And he's currently dating Janet, who's formerly Hank Pym's wife, but Hank Pym is currently merged with Ultron. That should get you guys mostly caught up, as now Tony Stark is dealing with the realization that he's just not real. And if you enjoy this and want more, make sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, as we bring you comic book videos on a daily basis. Now, let's go ahead and begin with Iron Man issues 14 and 15, following up after the War of the Realms. After facing his virtual parents and being tricked into drinking in the virtual escape, Tony Stark learned that his greatest fear was true. He is not the original Tony Stark, the one that was killed by Captain Marvel. Every biological scrap of himself is gone, and he is nothing more than a simulation with digital memory. A flawed copy that fell off the wagon. However, one of his problems provided a simple solution for the other. Digital memories can be erased. All he has to do is delete everything that happened back to the point before he ever took those drinks. He could literally be wiped clean and be sober again. But of course, he's going to have to make a recording of himself explaining all of this to himself. Bit of a win-win. Tony sighs as he watches the recording of himself explaining all of this asking, does he always sound this smug? The recording then says, of course, he always loves the sound of his own voice. And the recording then goes on to state that after they've now gone over everything, they're on the same page. He built a device to fix his alcoholism, but didn't follow through with it. He fought a dragon, which was totally awesome. He then helped Thor and the Avengers fight elves, trolls, and giants, and did some good work there. He saved the world. Those are the broad strokes, and here at Stark Unlimited, things could be better. The escape was a total fiasco. He's facing a million lawsuits from his virtual reality world. Jocasta quit, and Amanda left. But hey, on the plus side, things are great with Janet. Rhodey standing by you, and the controller's defeated. And you got to kill your virtual parents, which was very therapeutic. Go you! Uh, yes, this is a lot to take in, but one last thing. Since you're all better now, and not an alcoholic, I called Carol and said that you could be her sponsor again, and she's on the way. A second later, Captain Marvel appears, shouting that she just got his stupid message. Erasing his memories of drinking is not a clever solution to being an alcoholic. You just can't fix it with a snap of your fingers, Tony! Tony tells her that it really wasn't a snap, more of a bleeding edge technology. But before he could finish the hologram, Tony says that he's going to have a lot to work on. So he's gonna wrap this up and self-delete the message. If you need any specific details on the last two weeks worth of your memories, consult this convenient portable memory engram hard drive located here. Captain Marvel looks where the hologram pointed and asks if there's supposed to be something there. Tony says that this is a practical joke that he's playing on himself. He's kind of impressed. And at that moment, alerts go off and a computer begins to announce, Intruder alert! Intruder alert! On the main hall, Bethany, the security officer, pushes through the Stark Unlimited staff, telling everyone to get out of her way. Whoever the jerk that is using the stealth tech is, they're going down. Bethany fires her gun, hitting the cloaked man, and Spymaster gets up, stating that it was a good shot. Now it's my turn! He throws a knife at Bethany, but she catches it, telling him that she'll hang on to it. That moment, Bethany is shocked from the knife. Spymaster tells her, that's fine, but I'll have to charge you. Rhodey then radios in, stating that he has eyes on the intruder. Is anyone else hearing this? Tony and Captain Marvel head over to the hangar, with Rhodey stating not to worry about him. They need to stop Spymaster. He's going for the... Tony stops him, telling everyone, It's okay, Sinclair's good, but he can't fire any of the weapons without the passcodes. Spymaster asks, Would those codes happen to be an engram that I just so happen to have? As the Manticore robot locks onto Tony and Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel asks, How is your really clever solution working out so far, Tony? Tony flies through, shielding the civilians, telling Captain Marvel, I got this! You've got the bigger guns, so take out the Manticore! Captain Marvel punches the Manticore, stating that she'd like to just blow it up, but she's trying not to destroy the hard drive. Tony shouts, Those are expendable! 
All that matters is that we can't let Spy Master have them. Spy Master tells him, that's right. There's so much good stuff on here. Take, for example, the override codes to the Iron Man suit. At that moment, Tony's suit spins around and begins to fire at Captain Marvel and he yells, whatever you do, don't punch me through the chest to kill me again. While the two of them begin to fight, Tony begins to manually override the suit, but Spy Master asks, why would I stop at one when I can have all of your suits, Tony? Several explosions go off at the SU building as dozens of Iron Man suits fly out and begin to shoot at everyone on site. Tony engages the suits, stating, Look, some of these are classics, and this is going to hurt me way more than it's going to hurt you. Captain Marvel tells him, I'm sorry for your loss, but you need to suck it up. There are too many. What do we do? Tony tells her to knock out the central control node, in this case, the manticore. It's like staking the head vampire. Just then, Tony and Captain Marvel are shot, and Tony says, ah, I have an idea. It doesn't matter if the hard drive is damaged. I'm gonna stop Spymaster. He flies over to the Manticore, releasing an EMP shockwave that stops Spymaster and rips apart the cockpit. As he does, all of the suits begin to switch to offline mode, and Captain Marvel tells him, that's the Tony Stark I know. As Tony takes the hard drive, he tells her, not quite, but uh, give me a few weeks, Carol. Later, back at Stark Unlimited, Bethany says the upload's complete. How's he feeling? Tony tells her that he could go for a drink, but he won't. Bethany goes on telling him, good, now that that's over with, we have a big security problem. When did you come up with this memory wipe solution to your problems? Tony thinks for a moment and says about three hours ago. Oh, I see what you're getting at. Yeah, there's a very small window of time where somebody learned what I was doing and hired Spymaster to steal that drive. Rhodey then says that they don't need Tony Stark to figure this one out. Who has access to their systems? And who's been a big pain in their butt for over a year? Tony and Rhodey look at each other and they say, Banetronics. Meanwhile, over at Banetronics, Arno Stark looks over the stolen data that Tony used to create their parents in Escape when Sunset tells them that their visitor has arrived. Arno, meet Jocasta Pym. Jocasta walks in stating hello. She recently interacted with some of Banetronics old androids and Sunset continues for her stating that Joe believes that they're better equipped here to help her reach her new life goals. Jocasta then says that she's looking to upgrade her humanity side. Will they help her with that? Arno smiles, telling her that she can trust him. She came to the right Stark. The next day, Tony goes to Capitol Hill to meet with the House of Representatives regarding the escape events. Senator Brickman asks Tony if what he's saying is that he's not responsible for his company's disastrous escape machines. Is he not the one in control of what his company does? Tony tells him that he knows that this part is a bit confusing, but the controller is a supervillain. He caused this. We're trying to fix it. Brickman says that they would assume that his company would clean up after its own mess. How was this dangerous system allowed to launch? Tony explains that the protocols to prevent violence were overridden by a corrupt operating AI. Brickman asks what exactly is an AI, Mr. Stark? From my understanding, AI are robots. Are you friends with robots? Who is telling the AI what to do? It's you, isn't it? You're the boss of it all. Tony says, well, the program is given certain parameters, but it's also built to learn and grow in a way to improve its efficiency. Brickman fixes his glasses and states, there are two major types of AI, isn't that correct, Mr. Stark? The escape network should have been tightly monitored, directed system, but you enabled an autonomous entity to make the important decisions. Tony begins to tell him that, as he said before, Motherboard's AI was corrupted. And Brickman asks, so this Motherboard is responsible for the destruction that resulted from its actions? Let me rephrase the question. Are AI responsible for the choices they make? Tony Stark tells him that if an AI is fully autonomous, maybe they are responsible for the choices they make. But I do not believe that that's been definitively decided in the court of law, Mr. Brickman. Brickman goes on telling him, Of course, this motherboard of yours is not available for testimony or able to be charged with crimes because she was destroyed. Is that not correct, Mr. Stark? And speaking of the matter of upgrading, you yourself have been using your technology to upgrade your mind and body. Is this not correct, Mr. Stark? Could you give me a percentage of how much of your mind and body are still your own? How would we know if you are not some form of artificial intelligence? Tony takes a deep breath and says, It is quite possible that I am an artificial intelligence. As Tony tries to unpackage that over at Banetronics, Aaron, aka Machine Man, tells Jocasta that this is insane. She would be denying her robot self by upgrading to a more human body. It is horrifying! At this very moment, Tony Stark is turning the term AI into something ugly, something that could be controlled. 
As Arno walks in, he tells Aaron that he really should get those rage levels looked at. And after telling Arno some very choice words, he looks at Jocasta and tells her not to do this. But Jocasta leaves with Arno, stating that this is who she wants to be. This is the next step of Jocasta's evolution. Back at Capitol Hill, though, Brickman holds out a device stating that you may be an AI. Perhaps the AI version of yourself could be used to compare. AI Tony appears, stating, Whoa! Whatever's going on here, I probably shouldn't say anything until I consult a lawyer. Brickman tells AI Tony that he shouldn't worry about it. After all, he's already under oath. Tony stands up asking, Where did you get that device? And Brickman says, a concerned citizen brought it to my office. The point is that this fully autonomous version of yourself is as alive as you. Does it have legal rights and responsibilities? Do you? How are we supposed to tell which is the real Tony Stark? AI Tony says, uh, Guys, do I get a say in this? Because I'm just a snapshot of Tony Stark's mind that is still evolving. A functioning AI with my own goals and intent. Brickman then asks, Can you prove that? And AI Tony says, The math involved is way above your pay grade. But since it would be unfair for me to put myself on the stand without any awareness of the situation, may we please have a recess? Meanwhile, over at the Avengers Mansion in Manhattan, Vision and Wonder Man fly down, stating that they're surprised to see one another. Vision tells him that he was contacted by Tony Stark regarding his current legal situation. Explanations around his existence as an artificial being are probably being required. Wonder Man tells him that that makes sense. Tony probably asked him here to talk to a person about how they come back from the dead. Jarvis opens up the door, stating, It is so good to see you. Please come in, Vision and Wonder Man. As the three walk down the hallway, Jarvis stops and lets Vision and Wonder Man get ahead of him, and then he presses a button on the wall. Little orbits pop out of the wall, and they begin to ask, What are those? Suddenly, the two of them are electrocuted, and Jarvis tells them, It's all right. It's a part of the plan. The Master's Plan. Back in Washington, Janet flies over the AI rally, radioing to Rhodey, asking where is their billionaire buffoon. Rhodey says that he's back at Stark Unlimited, and it's her turn to keep an eye on him. Janet tells him, wonderful. So besides them, he doesn't have a friend in the world. And Rhodey says that he's not so sure about that. There is one guy that he appears to be getting along with. Inside the assembly, Tony asks AI Tony if he has any idea how Brickman dug him up. And AI Tony says that he has no clue, big guy. He goes on stating that since Joe Costa and Friday rejected acting as the operating system in his armor, he was thinking that maybe he would be a perfect fit for his own armor. As the two go on, Janet coughs to interrupt them, asking if she should leave them alone. Or maybe she and the human Tony could go get something to eat while he talks about how bad the hearing went. Tony grabs his helmet, telling AI Tony to jump in it, and AI Tony says that it's already done. So as the two of them go out above the AI rally, a shadow appears, and the robots begin to cheer, shouting, Vision is here! The solar-powered stud is in the house! The Viz Biz! Tony sighs, stating that he hopes Vision isn't here to chew him out about the robot thing, and AI Tony scans Vision, and he reports, Uh, Tony, that's not Vision, or at least not all Vision. A human-infused vision flies down through Tony, shouting for him to stay out of his way, and he reaches for Janet. Tony asks, Did you hear that voice? It was electronic. Wait, is that Wonder Man? What are you? Wonder Man lunges for Janet, but Tony blasts him away. Wonder Man turns back, telling Tony, You are never a part of the equation, and you won't be once you are subtracted from it permanently. As Wonder Man launches himself into Tony, the two crash into the ground in the middle of the rally as AI Tony asks, Did you feel that? He's as strong as Vision plus Wonder Man. Pretty impressive. Tony yells not to give him the bad news. Give me solutions. And AI Tony says, Fine, evasive maneuvers underway. Janet flies in shouting to stop this, but Wonder Vision smacks her and says, Helper unit, initiate retrieval. Janet begins to pick herself up, stating that that hurt. And Jarvis kneels down telling her, it's going to be okay now. I was so worried. Janet yells, thank God, but Jarvis shocks her, putting her in his pocket, stating, the master is well aware of the situation at hand and has it all under control. Back with Tony, he's struggling to keep Wonder Vision back, and he asks AI Tony if they don't have anything that can stop a synthoid or a robot. AI Tony tells him that they really don't have time to do an analysis given their current situation, and Tony says that he does have a plan, but it's going to suck. An EMP cascaf will disrupt Vision's brain and Wonder Man's ionic energy, but AI Tony tells him that it would also fry your onboard AI, effectively killing me, but hey, it's a good plan. Probably the only one we got. Tony tells AI Tony that he's sorry, but AI Tony tells him, don't be. Just make sure you kiss Janet a whole bunch, and then you vaguely feel guilty about killing yourself. Tony sighs, telling him, I'm an idiot. 
and AI Tony kisses Tony's nose, telling him, You got it from me. Tony then releases the EMP blast, effectively stopping Wonder Vision, but also all of the robots at the AI rally. And back at the mansion, Jarvis turns on the lights, telling Janet that everything is in its proper places. She beats on the test tube, asking what's going on, and another voice tells her, Don't mind him. He's just following orders. You know, I couldn't believe it when I found out you were with Tony. It's nice to see you again, despite that little wrinkle. And as the person walks out, Ultron says, As much as I'd love to spend time catching up, we'd best get down to business, Janet. And that is the prequel to the Ultron Agenda, the last storyline of Tony Stark Iron Man before we go into Iron Man 2020. Now, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Give us a like. Next week, we're going to bring you the Ultron Agenda, and then we're going to be bringing you Iron Man 2020. So if you like Tony Stark, you like Iron Man, sub to this channel. It's coming, guys. I'll see you next time.